Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 14th of January, 2018. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the pastor at the church, and for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to share with you uh, just the highlights of this past Sunday's message. Uh, we've been doing this series on spiritual warfare. This is uh, part 7 of resisting the devil in that uh, effort. And uh, from James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And we're in the section on resisting the devil. And we've made our way to uh, the armor of God. And uh, and it's just saying it's important to understand what's being talked about before we apply the metaphor. So we'll have a message where we take all this together again uh, after we've looked at each piece. So uh, in Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, it tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and to put on the full armor of God. Don't just put on one piece or another. Get the whole thing. God is provided for you, put it all on. And it says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against uh, the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. All right, and so we're to take up this full armor of God so we can stand. And so... Um, the, uh, the this Ephesians 6.17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We'll get to the sword of the Spirit in prayer a little bit later, but today we're going to deal with the helmet of salvation. All right, so simply put, if we're going to stand against the schemes of the evil one, uh, we're going to need the protection that God's salvation uh, provides to us. So here's a short list of some things that uh, were protected from and provided to us uh, through the salvation of God. It protects us from eternal punishment and separation from God, according to Isaiah 59.2. It protects us from being alienated from the life of God, according to Ephesians 4.18. And over in Ephesians 2.12, it says it protects us from being without hope and without God in this world. All right, And so it provides assurance of eternal life. In John 10, 28, it provides confidence to draw near to God and find help in a time of need, according to Hebrews 4, 16. In 1 John 4, 17, it says that it provides confidence in the day of judgment. And over in Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, it says it provides us with a future and a hope. And uh, in the battle, you know, we're his. And this salvation says that we belong to him. Uh, 1 John 5, 19 says we know that we are of God. Okay, so the whole world lies in wickedness, but we are of God. We know this. All right, do you know it? All right, Ephesians 2.19 tells us that uh, you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. You know, that's, you know, we need to have that confidence in our heart. And receiving the helmet of salvation shows that we're his. All right, that, that, that mark on us that says we're, we're the saved ones, uh, that, that's, it tells us, it tells anybody that wants to look, we're his. All right, so this word for take means to take up what you've received. In other parts of the armor are told to uh, you know, put it on, sink into it, take it up, fasten it on, bind it on. And then you have this new word for the helmet and the sword, which means to take up what you received. A little more gentle kind of a thing, but there's more of this, I think, sense of honor uh, that the helmet and the sword have been given to you. Uh, the helmet being this thing that marks you as one that God has saved. All right, that, that word uh, that's used there, uh, the, the, the definition from Thayer's New Testament words says this, to take up with the hand. To take up, to receive, okay, receive. And I think it's important that we learn it, it, as, as American Christians to receive. You know, sometimes we're, we're not so good at that. Not to refuse friendship, to receive hospitality, to receive one into one's family, to uh, bring up or educate. To receive favorably, to give ear to, to embrace, to make one's own, to approve, to not reject, okay? And so, you know, that's what we're supposed to do with this helmet of salvation, receive it, make it our own, all right? That that salvation that was given to us by God is ours, okay? So turn, receive the forgiveness and the confidence that we are his, all right? Salvation is by grace through faith, okay? It's a gift. It's a gift that we receive, all right? So uh, in Isaiah... Uh, when, uh, you know, the armor of God is first mentioned in the scriptures, uh, it's the armor that God puts on. Why does he put it on? Well, for two reasons. One, because there's no man to intercede. There's no man that will take up the battle. And so he puts on the armor and fights the battle. Why? For a group of people that he has chosen and has decided he's going to save. All right, and that's important. Hang on to those little pieces there as we move on here. And so in Isaiah 59, 20, that's the end of this passage about the armor of God in the Old Testament. It says, A Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, declares the Lord. And so, you know, repentance is a big part of this receiving. All right, the helmet is an unearned emblem. All right, it says that he has chosen us. All right, we receive it and take it up favorably and make it our own. 
you know, that moment when you put that thing on like a, like a crown, you know, it's, it's something that's, that's placed on your head as, as an honorary thing, uh, as an emblematic thing, uh, and as a mark that, that we are his. You might remember in the Old Testament that when God was marking somebody, he would mark them on their head uh, to say that, that he had a particular purpose for them. All right, so let's move on. So in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 through 11, it says this, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, uh, whether we died before he came or uh, you know, still alive when he comes, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are doing. And so this encouraging us to receive our salvation, to take on that helmet of salvation and to, to know that we are his, uh, you know, that is uh, just a, a really, uh, it's a powerful thing. And we're to encourage one another to do that. And so then there's this, this question that's asked in Scripture, who can succeed in standing against us? And who is us? It's a humbly submitted child of God dressed in the armor of God. All right, Romans 8, 31 through 39 says this, What shall we say to these things? All right, if God is for us, who is against us? Well, we know who's against us. It's the evil one. We're told in Ephesians that, you know, this is so we can stand against this evil one who's against us. All right, he who did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? We know who brings charges against God's elect. It's the evil one. But it's God is the one who justifies, it tells us here in this passage. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, uh, who also intercedes for you. You might remember that uh, the reason why God put in the armor in the first place was because there was nobody to intercede, so he intercedes for us in Isaiah. This is now fulfilled here because Christ intercedes for us, all right, and says that uh, uh, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution, famine, nakedness, peril or sword? These are the things that come against us in this world, uh, you know, and it says, just as it is written, for your sakes, we are being put to death all day long. Uh, we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life... Okay, I'm sorry, just let me get over here so I don't misquote. Uh, ah, of course, the two papers stick together right at the end here. Okay, let's, let's, let's start that again. Uh, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, now let me go back just for a minute. Angels, principalities, okay? It's the powers, okay? Uh, it's, it's, uh, this, is, this passage is talking about the same thing that Ephesians is talking about when it talks about this battle that we're in and how that we are overwhelmingly uh, conquerors, you know, through him who loved us, all right? And this helmet of salvation, this assurance that we walk in is uh, the great part of this, all right? So receive it, make it your own. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.